Welcome into a playoff edition of the PHLY Phillies podcast brought to you by Ace Hardware, who's sponsoring Red October. Red October is powered by Ace Hardware Home Services. Visit Ace Hardware Home Services online at acehardwarehomeservices.com to get started on your next project. Jim, I'm a uh, big Ace Hardware store man myself. I feel like I'm there weekly at my local Ace. Uh, I'm sure you got quite the honey-do list at home uh, as well as we all do. As a matter of fact, I have an Ace Hardware less than a mile from my house. I am a regular. Uh, They they know me well. And, uh, yeah, I'm in there all the time. Uh, You know what they say, Ace is the place. The helpful (laughs) hardware, man. And uh, it's very fitting because I think the Phillies have the best Ace in this postseason. Boom, what a transition. In Zach Wheeler, though that Terry Scooble's pretty good too. <laughs> yeah, I bet on him as an underdog the other night. Uh, what a story in Detroit. What a story in Kansas City. Some really cool playoff things happening, unless you're from Baltimore, where they just can't seem to win a playoff game. Did you see the empty seats over there? Yeah, nine in a row they've lost in the playoffs. That is brutal. Yeah, I, and they're got so many good young players and, and young talent uh, is so exciting and you can win with young talent. Uh, I still think they're coming together as a team. They, maybe, uh, you know, who knows what's going to happen with Corbin Burns, but they need some more starting pitching, but I still think they have a lot of good years ahead of them, but they, you're right. They need to get over that postseason hump. It sort of starts living in the back of your head a little bit. I was just, uh, I was surprised to see so many empty seats down there, but I mean, you talk about another team with great young talent in uh, Kansas City and Bobby Witt and a great leader in um, Salvi Perez. Uh, so, yeah, Detroit and Kansas City, a couple upsets over there in the American League. Yeah, and if uh, if it's not for um, Otani and Aaron Judge out there, your MVPs of baseball are undoubtedly Francisco Lindor and Bobby Witt Jr. Um, it's, uh, you know, just those other guys are having – historic seasons uh, so right. kind of like Zach Willard to your point not I mean I I still think he's going to lose out on the Cy Young but deserving of it and now he gets to take the ball game one at home at Citizens Bank Park uh, this is going to be pretty awesome he's one of the best pitchers in the game so it's going to be great theater on Saturday whoever they're playing whether it be the Mets or the Brewers yeah um, and if it is the Mets I mean he'll, he'll be pumped up he'll be motivated he'll be oh, focused yeah against either team but you know he always has a little he don't really admit to it but he's always got a little extra down in the tank for the Mets I mean he the year they went the year they went to the World Series you know he was coming off Tommy John surgery he didn't pitch that year and um, he didn't go sit in the dugout for the World Series he was down and they told him to stay in uh, Port St. Lucie and continue his rehab I think that's always stuck in the back of his craw a little bit I mean uh, a long time has passed I'm sure he remembers the Mets. Uh, I know he remembers the Mets um, of a previous administration made sure. no real effort to keep him when he became a free agent. He came 100 miles down the street and kept getting better and better and better. So uh, regardless of who he um, is firing against on Saturday, I guarantee he will be firing, and that's a great place to start. It's always about starting pitching. It always starts with the starting pitching in a short series, uh, starting pitching – can be such and that game one starter can be such a tone setter yeah and it's why I I feel really good about the Phillies chances is because of Zach Wheeler we'll get to game two in a second but tonight's game three now Jim in this new MLB format uh with three teams in you know making it um the it's only gone to a game three twice now and 12 times and the Mets are in both of those game threes uh, what's your gut telling you about tonight? Who do you got? You got Mets or Brewers? Who we, who do you think we're going to be playing? I don't know. I mean, it's a tough call. These short series are tough. You can be you can have a great season and be bounced like that. You look at the Orioles. Um, you look at the Astros. I mean, you can have a short series and, and fight your fight your guts out to get into the tournament and, and pick up two quick wins and and move on and get rid of a good team. Look at the Phillies in twenty twenty two. I mean. I still think about that, you know, that one inning, how it almost, you know, it was a, it changed the complex, uh, complexion of the entire postseason. You know, they were losing two to nothing against St. Louis. They have that one good inning. Bohm gets hit by a pitch. Segura takes this awful swing at a pitch off the plate and, and hits it into, 
into right field and the dominant closer, Ryan Helsley, can't throw a strike and, and Marmol doesn't get him out of there. Short series, man, are tricky. And you go win one, it can springboard you for a few weeks. So uh, I don't know what's going to happen tonight. I'll tell you this. I'm looking forward to watching it. Um, you know, the Mets have Quintana on the mound. He's a veteran. He's been around. I'm sure he's going to be, uh, you know, composed and, and the moment won't get to him. But, you know, he's facing some tough right-handed sticks over there. So we'll see. I mean, certainly the Brewers should have some emotion and some energy on that side, on their side with that home crowd, um, you know, with with the late comeback and the, and the big home runs and the emotional way they pulled out game two. I mean, they were looking at um, – they were looking at going home, and they rallied to to uh, win that game and, and force the game three. And, you know, the Mets just didn't put it away. Um, the Mets, who also has, have had something special going here down the stretch. Tigers, something special down the stretch. Mets, something special down the stretch. Uh, we'll see if the Mets can rekindle it tonight. Um, it should be, you know, a, a fascinating game. Somebody's going to step up and have a big performance uh, that springboards them into Philadelphia. Uh, so speaking of that, if the Mets do advance or, you know, a Tigers, for instance, it's kind of, you know, people view those teams and they go, oh, no, have they found the magic at the right time of the year? Have they been playing playoff games for three or four weeks now where every game matters? Uh, you've seen thousands of baseball games in your life, Jim. Uh, do you buy that? Do you do you think it's a real thing that the opponent senses a hot team coming into their stadium? Um, I, I think there's a little bit to it. I, I don't know if it's so much that the opponent senses it and, go, and gets back on their heels as as the hot team just feels gets a hits. little invincible. Yeah, yeah, it feels like feels like you know because confidence is so important in in all sports. I mean, you play golf, you know, when you feel good over a shot, uh, it's it's uh, a difference maker. And the sa same thing in all sports when you're confident. So I think that hot team, you know, I saw it in 2011 um, with the Cardinals. Uh, you know, I think they finished 23 and 10. Freeze, right? He What's just, that? David Freeze was just hitting everything, wasn't that? Yeah, they, yeah, 2011 when they took out the Phillies, they finished 23 and 10, I think, to, to get in. We saw it with the Phillies uh, got hot in 2022. We saw it with the 03 Marlins. Um, you get hot. And, you know, I, I, I know that cliche about momentum is your next day starting pitcher and, and I do believe in that because you know your next day starting pitcher on the other side can shut down somebody and break a team's momentum but you know I also think that there is something to be said for winning momentum going into the postseason for confidence for believing um, for playing like you have nothing to lose like sure. you're almost playing with house money like the Phillies maybe in 2022 they won't be feeling that way this year because the ex expectations are huge with the talent they have the payroll they have the season they had um but I bet you know I bet the Mets if they can get by um Milwaukee will have some of that and like you mentioned the other league the Tigers certainly have some of that some of that going for them yeah youngest team in baseball by a wide margin they might uh not be a little naive to the pressures of the postseason. Uh, so, Jim, yesterday Rob Thompson talks to the media, and I know Matt Gelb asked him a couple times about the game two starter. Uh, you know the inner workings of the Phillies as well as anyone and how they view splits versus gut versus old school, new school, numbers, whatever. How much do you think they're weighing Aaron Nola versus Christopher Sanchez for game two because of those Sanchez splits? Is it strictly in your mind dependent upon – if it's the Mets or the Brewers, do you, how much do you think they're kind of juggling this right now? Yeah, I, I think Rob Thompson is kind of a blend guy. He'll use his gut, but he is also well-schooled in the data, in in analytics. He came from the Yankees when they were at the forefront of that. The binder, the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it, but even beyond that, their, their analytics department was a lot more than a binder. In the sure, 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 sure. Um, uh, and he came to the Phillies as, as they were growing their analytics operation into what they are now. Uh, I would call him a powerhouse in that realm. Uh, but he still is a blend guy, an instincts guy, um, and and a numbers guy. Um, I don't know which way they're going to go. I wouldn't be surprised either way. But, you know, parsing some of his comments yesterday, um, certainly sounds like – he's more than open to the possibility sure. of Sanchez. I mean, if I were to just look at Rob and his personality, I would say he's steady. 
He's trusting. He trusts his veterans. He's going with Nola. He's that, you know, going to play it straight and go with Nola. And there's a lot of merit to that. You know, you come out with Zach Wheeler, who we know how great he is. Yeah. Um, the expectation he can deal in game one. And then if you can nail down game two in a short series at home, come out of them, you know, come come at them guns ablaze with your two best right out of the gate, short series, a lot of merit to that. Um, Nola's pitched often against uh, the Mets. He's had very good success in his time against the Brewers. Maybe you go one, two, try to, try to hit him hard early. But I do think you have to factor in um, some other things like Sanchez's performance at home. Um, like the left-handed bats uh, sure. in both lineups, how both teams hit lefties, um, and uh, the fact that you could split up the righty-lefty uh, with Wheeler and Nola by inserting a, a lefty in Sanchez. And by the fact that Sanchez not only pitches well at home, but he clearly feels good at home. So I'm sure they're weighing all of those things, and it wouldn't surprise me either way, but parsing Rob's comments – a little bit uh, yesterday gave me the indication that, you know, maybe they are leaning towards Sanchez uh, at home. And then you got Nola on the road where he's an unflappable veteran, can, sure. pitch, in a hostile, can pitch in a hostile environment. Um, not a, not a, I don't think you can lose either way. I really yeah, don't. It's a good problem to have, as they say. Good problem uh, to have. The other, the other one, Jim, that, that kind of jumped out to me yesterday was he was asked about Austin Hayes. And in the inner squad scrimmage yesterday, Hayes went two for four. Rob said his bat speed is back. Uh, but he said, most importantly, Hayes told him he felt great running the base pass. Like of he course he did. Back. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course, because he wants some action. Uh, but Rob went on to say, you know, the possibility of him being a full-time player um, is, is on the table versus a platoon. Yeah. The Mets possibly have three lefties they could throw at you. Uh, I know that's going to go into the equation. How much is it strictly, if it's Mets, you think we're going to see Austin Hayes uh, as a full-time player, if it's Brewers, maybe it's a platoon. How do you view this? Yeah, I don't know if we're going to see him as a full-time player because a full-time player means, to me, you play against righties and lefties. But sure. um, they got him back in July because he hits left-handed pitching because they were you know, eyeballing a left-handed uh, left-field platoon. I know they ended up using Marsh a little bit more in center field at that time and Hayes a little bit more uh, full-time in, in left field. But I think... Uh, his best contribution is as a uh, platoon guy because uh, he hits left-handed pitching. The numbers are actually kind of dramatic. So I think you answered your own question. Mets, three lefties, you know, Quintana, Manaya, Peterson. Um, if if he's feeling as good as he says he is, I would expect to see him play against left-handed pitching and Marsh play against right-handed pitching. I think that's probably your best lineup. Um, and um, – and off, be, and off of that, do you think because of the Mets left-handed uh, heaviness, so you could see a little bit more Sosa, or do you think Stott has that every game? You know, Rob really a lot. You know, you saw him. He 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 was um, committed to to Kimbrel. Uh, you saw him uh, very committed in in twenty twenty two to their plan, and that plan was bringing in Alvarado to face um, Jordan Alvarez. Um, his, you know, plan last year was stick with Rojas throughout the postseason. And in all three of those occasions, things didn't really work out well. He has hinted over the course of the season, even dating back to spring training, that he might be a little more flexible uh, in some of his philosophies. That leads me to believe that I think we could see a platoon at second base as well hmm. with Stott and Sosa. I'm not sure about it. We'll find out when the lineup comes. He's not going to tip his hand. He's not gonna, certainly not going to tip his hand in, uh, before he talks to the guys because communication and looking guys in the eye and telling them where they stand and here's how we're going to use you and how you can help us, that's his strength, communication. But, yeah, I mean, I would consider it. Sosa's numbers are much better than um, than Stotts against left-handed pitching. Stotts struggled against left-handed pitching. This is about wins. What's it, 11 wins? This is about 11 wins. Um and I mean, there's no time for feelings and, uh, and sure. make, making sure, you know, everybody gets a long look uh, so you can make a good decision. You've had a long look. You've had you 162 know, six games. Weeks, yeah. <laughs> plus six weeks of spring training sure. plus, you know, previous years, there's a lot of body of work on these guys. I think it's, it's incumbent um, on, you know, for him and, and for the, 
for the fans and the franchise and for the guys in that locker room who want rings on their fingers and and himself to put the best guys on the field, the best lineup. It all have that lineup work as one. And you know, it, it's not individual, it's how they all fit together. And the best lineup, you have to go with the best lineup on that night that can produce you a win. So you can knock off one of those, you know, you can pull the number down 11, 10, 9. Uh, whoever gives you the best shot to win. And if it's platoons, you got to go that way. And I don't know what he's going to do, but yeah, I it's think fascinating. Strongly considering it and um, would be would be more open to it after the way things may have shaken out with some of his commitment to guys in the last two postseasons, if that makes sense. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right. Last one for you, Jim. Uh, this is new territory for the Phils. Obviously, they've played in the wild card round the past two years, and uh, it was gut wrenching and uh, edge of your seat. Uh, just watching Detroit game the other day, I was like nervous for Tigers fans. Like postseason baseball uh, is is gut wrenching. And in this new format, the team that has gotten these days off is three and eight. That's the reality of the situation. Do you think this time of year and having this week off is a positive or a negative for the Phillies? I know they're vets and and these guys are pros, pros, and they're going to put in all the work and do all that. But do you think there's something to it, or do you think it's just too small of a sample size uh, and too early to make that call? A little bit of I think there I think there might be a little something to it because baseball is an everyday game. These guys are conditioned to play every day, show up. You know, get ready, play, see pitches, throw pitches, have balls hit to you a million miles an hour. And when you don't play every day, I do think you can lose a little bit of edge, maybe a little bit. Uh, but I also think part of it becomes an excuse. Maybe you just don't play play well enough. The other team plays better than you. Uh, the other team comes in having played every day, fighting their ass off to get into the postseason. You know, I do think that helps them keep their edge. But um, I, I think it's a case-by-case -case basis. Basis. I mean, the Phillies are a team whose stars, and they need their stars to be great if they're going to win this thing. Their stars all need to produce. You win with your stars. They have a lot of stars. If they're not playing good, they're going to go home. Um, so a lot of their stars are north of 30. Some of them are, you know, some of their pitching needs a little little rest, carried high uh, high workloads. I mean, Harper's had been banged up a little bit. We know how important he is. He can carry a team. I think in this case, given their veteran status, given the fact they've relied so, uh, so much on a, a core group of relievers and starters, that um, a few days off, you know, doesn't hurt them. I mean, and there is this narrative that it can hurt you. Hopefully that hasn't. Um, landed too yeah. much in the clubhouse and got and, and guys' eardrums and they're thinking about it. But I think on a younger team, it might. These guys are pretty veteran. I mean, you know, nothing really bothers them. Um, I, I just think it's important to get out to an early lead, um, get the crowd into it, uh, you know, have Wheeler dealing. If Schwarber can lead off with, you know, 14 times this year, he led off games with a home run and they won 13 of them. I mean, talk about it. Tone setter. That's a good, yeah, that's a good plan. He should do that. Yeah, I mean, that's the plan. Hit a home <laughs> run, win the game. But I know that's, you know, that's like the old Seinfeld episode. I can't, you know, with Paul O'Neill. I'm not, you can't ask me to hit a home run. Um, <laughs> Let alone two. And, but, but, um, but I'm just, a good at bat would do the same thing, you sure. know. And it doesn't have to be Schwarber. A good first inning, second inning, something early. Um, and, um get that crowd going and all of a sudden I think any rust or, or that talk about the edge and the rest will go away. And, you know, maybe, maybe the best thing that can happen to this team is bring in the Mets. There's a rivalry there. Oh, I'd love it. Sure, I love a lot it. of those, sure. A lot of those pesky Mets fans are going to sneak in the building oh, they'll and weasel their way in. Yeah. Course. They'll weasel their way in and that'll be noticed in the dugout and in the field and in the on deck circle. And that will, build up a little sneer in the Phillies. So that might actually, in a weird way, be a good thing. Um, with this team, I think I would I would have opted for the rest if I had a choice. Sure. I don't think the rest is going to bother them. The layoff is going to bother them. But check back with me. I don't know for yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Bryce was wincing in pain uh, in D.C. last weekend. So a couple days yeah. off should be beneficial. Uh, it's great stuff, Jim. You're going to be writing for all PHLY throughout these playoffs. Looking forward to reading everything uh, for you diehards out there. So please 
Follow Jim on Twitter. You're going to be doing stuff with Anthony for his Red October specials. Uh, so you're going to be all over all PHLY, uh, hopefully for a long run here. Uh, so I appreciate it as always, Jim, and uh, we'll talk again soon. All right. Ace is the place. <laughs> you got that right. That's, do it. That's going to do it for us here at the PHLY Phillies podcast brought to you by our friends at Ace Hardware Home Services. See you soon.